You're listening to Want a Coffee with Kai Alicia and Adriana talking random, sensible shit. So I have been wanting to talk about this for a while because um a couple I feel like no maybe three four months after or maybe no three months after this whole urge of this Black Lives Matter movement came, came about in an, a very underground way um we started to hear about child sex trafficking and the way I started hearing about it was because I follow this girl on Instagram who uh, this this girl on Instagram who has leukemia and she's got five kids of her own and she referenced a site called Save Our Children and I looked at the Save Our Children and it was all about child sex, sex trafficking and how um, how child sex traffickers are now um soliciting their <laughs> I don't want to say I'm laugh I'm laughing I shouldn't laugh because it's just so weird but soliciting their products you know essentially children mm-hmm. like putting them on display through random companies like um Wayfair uh, Wayfair is you know similar to like eBay or Wish and shit like that companies like that and or Amazon and stuff so um, in these very overt but discreet ways, um, and I guess they are alleging that this is the way that elite child traffickers talk and sell and buy children, um, through through this through online uh you know through some online companies um they've got these like um basically products these kids that they sell um so you you may find like you know on on this site particularly Wayfair that that I've heard about um you may find like a an offer for a cabinet for like $29,000 and the cabinet's name is like Tiffany Tiffany Amber Amber meaning like the color of the wood or something I don't know you know something mm-hmm. just and then if and what we found or what these uh I guess not hackers but these people who are involved in exposing child sex trafficking found that if you research some of these names you'll see that they're associated with missing children or they're the names of missing children you will find um a picture of um an item that has an outrageous price and on the to give more indication that they're selling these kids or that it's child sex trafficking you'll find books that have strange titles on them which you know child sex traffickers i guess will inadvertently pick not inadvertently will will actually pick up these hints that oh yes this child is from haiti and you know if it's a book about like a famous haitian book or if it's uh, you know uh they'll think like oh the child's from haiti or if the child's a girl or a boy, it'll be like colors of blue. Like just, it's, it's hints. A, yes. Yes. You know, um, with a crazy amount on there as well. A crazy price. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll see another, maybe the same product mm-hmm. listed at a normal price um, somewhere on the website. So it's, um, yeah, so I've been wanting to talk about it because people are really 
you know, um, into this. And this is also, be, you know, that now they're linking like all these celebrities mm-hmm. as well. Um, Epstein, obviously, mm. but like, and his girlfriend, particularly, they're li- linking Bill Clinton. Um, they're also linking Christy Teigen, Chrissy Teigen. Um, who's the guy who came here and got COVID? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. <laughs> um, a bunch of Hollywood A-listers. They're accusing or saying that they are somehow involved in, in child sex trafficking um, by some of the things that they... It's just like really crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, when you sent me those links, I was like, I don't understand. Like, this is crazy. But at the same time, if they're doing that, not that we're condoning it in any way, it's really clever. And it makes sense because you know that all those transactions, they're supposed to be done in the dark night. But now it's like, hmm, you can do it. This makes sense. You can, you can set up your fake company, your fake eBay, your fake uh, Etsy, whatever, and pretend that you are... Legitimate. Yes, exactly. And if people know you in, you know, in the black net market, they're going to say, oh, uh-huh. hmm, good. This could be used not only for, for children. It could be used for organs or for weapons or for whatever, drugs. And it's so easy and so in your face that you wouldn't think about it. But I reckon that. Uh, it's also better visibility. Oh, yes. It reaches so much, so many, so many people and they don't have to like do anything illegal. Yes, because who, 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 who in their right mind is going to buy online a cabinet for... Thirteen thousand dollars. No one will do it. And if you have that kind of money, you just go buy it. Like it's someone who will buy that kind of things and have the the purchasing power to buy this type of things. They're not going to do it. Yeah. Like they're not going to buy that wafer, or they're not going to buy it in some random eBay eBay store. Mm-hmm. You have to see what you buy first. So yeah, it's. I I, I will say that it's. That it's really clever if you're if they're doing it like that and and sad also at the same time because you lose the you know uh, it's more difficult to to catch them yeah you catch them but God conspiracy theories is like they're really smart I mean if you listen to them it's like oh, you make absolute sense and at the same time it's like yeah but life doesn't work like that but then again it's like that's the fun part like you have to think about about it outside of outside the box it's true right Mm. and it's like i mean when you find out that like crazy things happen Mm -hmm. you never think that they could happen like you never are like that would happen definitely you're, yeah. you're always, I'm always like, oh my God, I cannot believe that happened. Like, that's crazy. Like, it was so in your face and no one did anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. But I have a theory about this. I feel like this is part of a, polit- a, part of a political campaign. And I think this is attached to that um, QAnon group. Oh God, yes. And I feel it was a push by the powers that be to get people distracted from Black Lives Matter in America so that we could um, we could um, think about kids and the home and parents and all of a sudden when you start thinking like that which is great you know you start to think of moms and um wives and 
husbands and the home and good things and values and tradition mm-hmm. and conservative and Republican, Republican and, and Trump. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? So, and even the people that are being attacked on the conspiracies is like they're all yeah, yes, exactly. They are all uh, from certain party. Yeah, let's say so. Oh God. They're all yes. strong Democrats. They're all vocal Democrats. They're and if they're not vocal Democrats, they're part of the Hollywood liberal, you know, or like progressive, you know what I mean, like group or um, category. And um, yeah, and the way they're trying to disseminate this this information, like we talk on our past podcast. Mm-hmm. Through social media. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's amazing the way it was. It was so well explained. It was like, okay, if I can read this his Instagram history for one minute, I'm going to understand everything. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and they will give the explanation the easiest way possible. Mm-hmm. And someone... Uh, and. I'm so sorry, but like someone who doesn't have that much of a criteria will say, hey, it's true. We're not denying that child trafficking is not happening. And it is happening. It could be like that. Might as well be, uh, be like that. But at the same time, it's like, who is who's discovering this information? And, 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 and the obvious question is, the FBI or the, I don't know, Scotland Yard or whoever mm-hmm. will, have the, will have the tools to research into that. And if they haven't done it, it's because, is it true? Is it not true? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, I think that in terms of how valid it is, I will hesitate mm-hmm. saying that how valid is that. I remember, uh, I think it was last week. I don't know if you saw in the news that this guy was blackmailing two girls. This guy in Melbourne was blackmailing two girls, one in the US and the other one in the UK. Mm. They they were 12 and 14. Mm. I, I don't know how it happened, but somehow these two girls, they sent him nudes, mm-hmm. disgusting guy. And he was asking them for more. If not, he called her parents and say, hey, I'm going to ruin your girl's life and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, because uh, I'm going to send all these pictures to, you know, the relatives, friends, whatever. And he got arrested. Oh, wow. Yeah, he got arrested because these two, uh, the, the police from the States and from the UK, they were like, hell no. And... They arrest the guy and he now, he now is waiting for, for trial. So then it's like, you see something that it was so short, like the, the scope was so short. It was just two girls. They could handle him. I would say something as big as wafer. They could maybe, you know, make something about it or not. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you think I, th- but in the same breath, it's like I, th- I start to think about like how disgusting um, it is to know and hear about all of the um, corporate professional trips to the Philippines oh, or God, to that's India. Terrible. In those districts and the child sex trafficking that that happens there, and it's a thing. You know what I mean? It's I I saw that one in uh, uh, Philippines. Mm-hmm. I was um I was on a vacation in Boracay, which is this small small beautiful island, and you will see white men on their forties, like you know business trips, like. You will see the kids, and they they were the girls or boy or boys dressed up as girls, and they would be just like dancing at the club, and then they were just like, "Hey, come on here!" And you will see men freely, freely 
just taking these kids back to their hotels and doing whatever they wanted to do to them and it was terrible and then you will see the kid coming back and doing it again doing it again and because it maybe it was so remote or maybe it was so oh it was not frowned upon it was culture already not culture but it was part of what society had become there already so they they were like yeah let's do that and it was so disgusting so you're right like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it happens and it could be anyone yeah and and the thing is is like we don't crack down upon that we we don't like and i somehow feel that the reason we don't really crack down upon that is because they're poor countries and they're ethnic countries yes if they were you know black countries asian countries spanish speaking countries you know yeah, poor, you know poor what countries, i mean yeah developing countries um i don't know that we'd hear as much and i feel that lots of child sex trafficking that happens um that's like I feel that that a lot of it is not just within America um but it it is within America and the target is poor um lost um uneducated that demographic mm-hmm. and that tends to be brown and black kids kids yeah. um in America that's you know what i mean and so there's not as much of a strong push it also um with the buying and selling and uh you know raping and child sex trap the whole thing um it's cheaper to purchase kids from third world countries than it is obviously from Russia mm, yeah. or Germany. Well, then again, who, who, like, who knows? Like, okay, we know that it's hap- the, the biggest percentage, obviously, is kids from developing countries. But I will say that there should be like a huge amount of people that white. I would say. Oh no, I think that there are. I just think that they're going to be in a particular category oh, yes. and nor usually there it's it's a class thing. I do yes. think that um it tends to be poor white which makes a lot of sense. You're like, the last on the list. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um and 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 poor white um is a small demographic. Mm. You know, it's not It's not common to be poor and white, you know. Mm. Um, In America, it may be a bit more common than... Anywhere. Yeah, yeah, than Mm. anywhere else. But, like, um, yeah. So, I I think it's rather interesting that they crack down on this guy from Melbourne who's dealing with two girls from the UK and America who probably were white. Oh, yes. Okay. So, I I kind of imagine that. Um, yeah, so... Uh, but it's also at the same time that... Oh, like you say, like it's part of the society because all these minorities, poor people being attacked. And also at the same time, people, they are... Oh, like, if you talk about this with any, anyone has to... Like, if you say, oh, whatever, anyone... Like, you will think what's going on with you, even if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're white, like, this is wrong. Everyone can agree on that. That is wrong. But at the same time, is there is everyday, like in everyday society, there is like an acceptance of like sexual misbehavior, I could say, like that. Mm -hmm. There is a rape culture. There is a, I'm sorry, there is a sexualization of girls. Mm-hmm. There is also pedophile, like, that, that like, you can call it pedophile like, culture. Uh, that 
is there in society mm-hmm. like and if we don't even acknowledge yeah acknowledge that mm-hmm. in everyday life it is impossible to to do something on the other side the other side that is so on the run mm-hmm. on the run you know i remember and or even in our face in our face you know there is something like this powerful uh politicians that they make so out of context comments about women about sex and it just flies it just flies or people they they just uh instead of acknowledging it they will just like occur laughing like "Ah," like i'm cringing but i'm not telling you dude stop doing that right and i saw that last week like it's some some Tony Abbott he moved to to the UK and some reporter was asking him I don't know what what was the comment but he was like at the at the end of the day they told him something like yeah and this guy he's going to go there and he's offering you uh 70 virgins mm. I don't know how the comment came about that and then Tony Abbott, he answered like, really? Uh, I really would like to meet them. And everyone was like, what? what? That's disgusting. And again, everyone in the news, everyone was like, ah. and then this other reporter who was criticizing him, he was like, this guy is actually telling you he wants to have relationship, sexual relationships with women who are unexperienced in sex and he wants to have with sex with so many women and then you can see that he kind of stopped himself and at the same time you could say that women without sexual relationships usually are girls yeah. exactly so that's the way that society i think has to look at it mm-hmm. like whoever some like whoever makes a uh a sexual comment like that that usually is like oh you know it, double sense you know like okay he didn't say anything bad but it's just like it's cringy but it's not that that's rape culture mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's unadmissible mm-hmm. and women were taught to anyone can say whatever and you're like ah. mm-hmm. and if you you know if you say something about it it's like oh you can just not take a joke it's yeah. like there are so many ways to make a joke yeah, that's not one of them. That's not one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I agree. You, like, I it's oh gosh, it was it, now it's reminding me of so many stories that I've had at work when people have said inappropriate things and you just don't know what to do. I remember I, you just I, I always just like kind of freeze in those moments, mm-hmm. even though like I know that I just want to be like, what are you talking Get the about? Person, yeah, well, don't say that. You know, mm-hmm. instead I'm just like, I literally just freeze. And those are the only moments where I just kind of like don't know what to do. Um, Because the rest of the time, you know, anything else I feel like I can just, I can, I can respond. I can respond. But all of a sudden when it's like, I remember like um, one of my, I was on a, I was on a trip uh, to, oh gosh, I forgot the country, but it was an Asian country. I was meeting some other colleagues for the first time, um, but I work with them virtually and we have the same boss who's really high up and um i was talking to this guy we have the same boss who's really high up and this this boss who i work directly with said um hey now you be nice with, to her she's my most valuable asset in this company and it was a really nice thing i knew what he was saying you know and i just giggled and then he goes he's like oh no it's fine she's my escort for the night fuck and i and the way he said it, I wasn't sure if he was saying um, I'm his escort for the night, for real, or if I was his escort for the night, right? And, um, like, just, just, you know, hanging out with him. And, and, and you know, my boss laughs. And, yeah. then, I, huh. and then I'm like, ah, ha, ha. But it's about me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so I'm looking like, 
an idiot after like I like come to and I'm like I have to go you know I just say to him like two minutes later I'm like I gotta go to the bathroom and I just disappeared to my hotel room because I was just so I was mortified that like I didn't know what to say as an adult as an adult an adult woman you know um god that gives me creeps but I was really trying to talk about um something that I read I read an article about how we think sex trafficking is all about um, or child sex trafficking is all about just abduction mm-hmm. and like, oh, that you know, they just get like taken away from their homes and dumped, you know, somewhere. Mm-hmm. But this girl was telling uh, her, her story about how she was sex trafficked for a good like 14 years of her life um, by her father. And her father, as a young child, like it started at like three, they would go to random places um, uh, like like a restaurant or Disneyland or theme some sort of theme parks, and he would take her to the men's bathroom. Oh God! And say that um, you know, and and put her in a stall, and say like, "I'll be back in just a, a couple of minutes." Um, your uncle. So and so, who you met when you were very young, is going to come in here and get you. Something like that. And a man who she didn't know would come in and do sexual things to her, and she would just do them. And she wouldn't talk about it because she was like, you know, like, I don't know what this is, you know. And she just kind of grew up thinking that that was what happened to her for years. I'm saying for years, like it was a good, you know, like, I, I can't remember the exact, but it was like teen years, like, I don't know, this any, I can't remember, but, you know, or like an airport, he, she said that like he would take her as a kid, have her over her, his shoulder, this is the most sinister shit, um, and the, they'd be in a crowd of people, you know, they'd be somewhere like at the the loading area or like, um, the place where arrivals are and you're meeting everyone and, you know, he'd be with her. And then all of a sudden she'd get taken by an uncle or a cousin Mm. or whatever it was. And it'd just be really quick. She'd just get past. And then afterwards she'd meet up with her father and he would give her an ice cream cone or something like some kind of like treat. God. And she talks about how her father was like a respectable man. Like, he was a little league coach. He was some kind of, like, custodian. Again, on the poor end of the spectrum, Mm -hmm. right? But you would never think that that he's the type of person to do anything like that. And so this was, like, a, um, you know, an article to say that, like, lots of sex trafficking, particularly with white women, white girls... It happens like this. With the family? With the family, inside of the family like this. Oh, God. Um, Or it happens in the most unassuming types of ways. Um, So is the dad in jail? I don't know. She didn't disclose that. She just wanted to say, this is my personal account of how I was sex trafficked as a child all the way up to my teenage years until I... Um, and no, she said no one noticed anything about her behavior as, as weird, even though she was very withdrawn, she was very quiet, um, no therapist or no school counselor, anybody or teacher said, thought anything of her until she said, I think one day that she like felt like, um, she went to the school nurse or something in her teenage years and said like, she felt like something was wrong with her vagina. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the nurse was like, Oh, asking her all these questions. Have you ever done this? And she's like, yeah, like all these sexual questions. And they're like, well, what else have, you know, at such a young age, like, have you, what do you mean you haven't had a, have you ever been with a, you know, they're, they're asking, investigating, and then they're fine. Then, you know, she's like, yeah, I just, I've been doing this since I was a kid. You know, all this kind of stuff, and that's that why. Not, oh, God. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. So, and I mean, you know, you hear about the the stories about um, Jackie Dugart. Remember the, the girl who was raped by, oh, not Jackie Dugart, but she's another one that was like, 
she was abducted though, but like there was a girl in Germany who was raped by her father. Oh yes, and and she was living in the, on the basement. Yeah, terrible. No, and uh, do you remember that movie on, on Netflix about the twin brothers? Mm. Yeah, there is. A, oh, I forgot the name about the name, but the story starts that it was famous because there were twins and the guy had an accident and he lost memory. And the twin brother, who knew that they were trafficked by their mom, they were raped by her mom, by uh, their mom, and she was trafficking them. Uh, the you know the 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 hit of the story was that uh, he was he didn't know to if to tell him that all that had happened because he had already forgotten and he was not traumatized. Oh anymore God. and the other guy was you know asking him like tell me about our past tell me about my mom and my dad and all that why don't you tell him tell me and the brother was like yeah rather not to tell you because you have forgotten all the things that we've been through but yeah the story was that uh the mom was she was a single mom and they have a step a stepfather and yes, she started raping them and tra- trafficking them when they were like three and they were white. Uh-huh. So the same, mo- and, and Mo was like, oh, you're gonna go play to this person's house. I'm gonna leave you there during the day. I'm going to, I'm going to pick you up uh, in the morning and behave and blah, blah, blah. And oh doing God. all this story. Yeah, it's, oh. Oh, I forgot what's the name of that documentary on Netflix, but it's really good. It's oh, really famous. I need to watch it. That's horrific, though. It's terrible. Oh, my so God. So it, it's like, I think they were rich. I, I think that they weren't even, like, on the mm-hmm. on the end of the mm-hmm. on the spectrum. They, 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 they were okay. It was just, like, the That's mom, just... she was sick. No, I, yeah, I definitely think that it happens. It, anyway, it doesn't, oh, not, you know. Yeah. Um, like, but I think it's just more common um, among those communities. But um, oh, but it's it's really tragic. No, God, no. This is what they say: like when you see a kid by himself or herself, or you know, you have to keep an eye on kids. Mm. You don't know, like, like if you see on the street, like. Mm. What are you up to? What are you mm-hmm. doing? You know, like, try to take care of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously not going after them, but just, like, keeping an eye. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. We want to know what you think. Send us your comments and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at hashtag WannaCoffeePod.